Good morning. Good morning. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, I welcome you all to the Trinity United Methodist Church here in LaGrangeville this 8th of May, Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day all. Uh, 2022, it is definitely a day of joy, a day of continued hope because we know the tomb is still open and continues to be for all time. And we are here for God's love and our own communication and strength. Let us turn now to our intro and jump and leap whatever the Spirit leads you to do. now turn to our call to worship. Mothers come in many different forms and today we celebrate them all. Thank you God for mothers. Everyone here is either a son or a daughter. Thank you God for my mother. For those women who have joined God in heaven and whom we miss dearly here on earth. Thank you God for mothers who have passed into your arms. For every woman who works constantly to raise her children the best she can. Thank you, God, for the mothers of today. For women who took in others' children through adoption and foster care. Thank you, God, for the mothers with hearts so big. For those women who have lost a child to death and must carry on. Thank you, God, for the mothers who are so strong. For all the women who do not have children of their own, but instead joyfully mother everyone else. Thank you, God, for mothers in spirit those who have influenced our lives in so many ways. We pray that we will honor them in everything, everything we do. Amen. Amen. And let us now join in our hymn, Standing as You Continue to Be Able, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. As I always think, Mother's Day, you lean on your mother's arms. Verses 1, 2, and 3, please.
please be seated. And before we go further, I see you here today, Mary. Thank you. Uh, could we have an update? I'm sure we're all interested to know how everything turned out yesterday. <laughs> I don't have a stop. Don't worry. Wow. Really? That's excellent, isn't it? That's, that's super. <coughs> Thank you for all your work. 40s to the 60s, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was chilly, yeah. And uh, after church, you do, as usual, the, the most Do you have a lot left? We do, despite how much left. We do have, you know, a lot more door. That's great. That's great. I would have been here. Uh, thank you for all the work you did. I would have been here, but I was for Friday and all of Saturday at West Point. I was officiating at a very complicated uh, wedding ceremony uh, right in the chapel. And it was like all the way, and they had to walk all, and it was, it was astounding. It was so. You can still shop today. Oh, I, I will. I, I will take pictures because, because Wikipedia has their um, penny social on the 21st, and they're asking for things. So I will take pictures. <laughs> I'll, let, I'll let them know. We have a meeting Monday night, anyhow, so I'll mention it. I'll mention it to Catherine. But they, uh, they have a big crowd that comes up to the city. So once people know about these things, the word gets out, they'll be back to Trinity next year or the next time we do this. But, so thank you all for the hard, I know it's a lot of hard work and it's not over, so I'll, I'll see how I can help you with all that. So Dar Darlene? Yes. Are there any other churches in the parish that maybe? Not that I'm, yeah, I'm not that I'm aware, but I will send the information out knowing we have so much. It really needs to go out today though, because we need to build Yeah, yeah, that, that's a problem we need to. I will send out an alert, and if there, anybody can come later this afternoon, is there anybody who could let them in, or, I mean, how? Um, well, just think about it. Let me know after the service. I don't want to, but I just, I saw you all gathering. I, want, I know we're all anxious to hear how everything. I just have one thing to say. Um, we really need more people to be involved in the setting up and the planning of the Mm -hmm. So you have to uh, think about this money that we raise is going to the church for all of us. And, uh, you know, all of us, not, besides Mary and Brenda, all of us are over 70. So, you know, we, we just can't do it by ourselves anymore. So please think about, if we do this again next year, you have to volunteer and not just come and drop your things and then say have a good sale. Yes. Very good point. And now is the time to get the word out. Okay, and okay, now we're, we're not to announcements yet, but this is just uh, stuff I know is on our hearts. We're very concerned, and thank you again for all your work with that. So turning now to our opening prayer. Grant, O oh Lord, that we, what we say will be true in our hearts. May we love each other with tenderness and compassion. May we practice love and forgiveness in our lives, in our families, and in our church family. May we be empowered to do all this through Jesus Christ our Lord who died and rose, so we might all live into an eternity of loving connections. Amen. And now it is our joy to hear our special anthem, Family Blessing. This is my chair.
Yeah. It's bright. Here. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Too much light. Mm. Now my I can't see it. Honor your father and mother as the Lord your God has commanded you, that your days may be long and that it may be well with you in the land in which the Lord your God is giving you. With gratitude we honor you in joyful songs Indeed, thank you so much, choir. And to reiterate, re reiterate the words you just heard, dear Lord in heaven, thank you for our mothers who we have who have watched over us with their love. Happy the home when God is there and love fills every breast. In gratitude, we honor you in joyful song today. Yeah, happy Mother's Day. Time for Grace Jar. Grace Jar, who would like to share a grace this morning? Carl, good morning, Carl. Are you going to be okay back there? Just make yourself comfortable. Okay, I, I, I'll, if you want to come up this way, I'll, you can come up, but you can just sit back there. That's privileged seating, you know. That's why they all had to leave. <laughs> okay, I'm just so happy to see so many of you here this day. Yes, Heidi, happy Mother's Day, Heidi. Thank you. I got uh, tapped to play for the uh, Orange County uh, Junior High All-County Festival Whoa. this past weekend. Wow. And I was just so delighted to hear the 7th, 8th, and ninth grade singers who had learned their music so well. They sang four songs in four different languages memorized. And Whoa. it was glorious. And the overall message was just all about love and peace and togetherness and supporting each other. It was well, just fabulous. That is nice. Thank you so much for sharing that. That's good to hear coming from our schools. We need to hear more good stuff like that. I know
It is the ungu. Yeah, if you'll yeah, always sure. remember that. Well, and the baby, and, and the baby continues to gain weight and Everyone joy, and everything's good. Perfect. That's wonderful. Anyone else? Yes, Michelle. I'm just grateful for my mother. That is so true. Yeah, I just I was thinking I didn't mention this in Wikipedia, but my my mother passed away a number of years ago, and my grandmother actually. Uh, today was the date I was still teaching, and I got the call. It was horrible. I so, uh, but I have in my in my room, in my office, uh, a picture that I took. That I didn't take. Somebody took of uh, my mother holding myself, holding me, and it was like this. And I got. The, I knew where it was. It was a big cherry tree in the middle of the yard. And I always love that picture because I look so happy. I'm kicking my little feet, you know, that kind of picture. And I have another picture when she was much older that I wanted another picture like that in the same place. And I would be standing in the same place, but in the one I was in her arms as a teeny baby, and the other one I'm standing like five inches over her. And I look at every morning, I look at that picture and I pray, I thank God for my mother and the influence she's had on me. And you know, we all have women in our lives who have influenced us. So Mother's Day is also a Christian family day uh, today in the Methodist Church because we have mothers are the basis of families in so many cases. And, and fathers who act like mothers. I mean, the mother, mother instinct, the mother uh, care is something we need to, to remember and, and be very thankful for because God also is like a mother in caring and loving for us. So we have to, this love, it's all about love. Let's keep that in mind. Uh, any more graces? Any more graces? Anybody online have a grace they'd like to share? Okay. Moving along now to our young at heart. Good morning, Clay. Clay, you are a reader today. Thank you for being here. Uh, Clay, we're going to be doing something a little different because what I'm going to do, uh, instead of jumping right to the, uh, the Young at Heart message, I'm going to actually uh, have the reading first and then the message. So if you could come forward, please, and read from Acts. We're reading from Acts uh, 9, 7 through 20, and then I will read 36 through 42, but I'll break it after Clay is reading. Clay is reading the, uh, the amazing story. We're continuing about Saul, evil Saul. Saul, the man Saul. Yeah. No, the play with. I'm sorry. The, drama, drama. Be ready. <laughs> the men who, the men who were traveling with him, stood speechless because they heard the voice, but they saw no one. Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were opened, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. For three days he was without sight, and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, and he answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight, and at the house of Judas look for a man of Tar Tarsus named Saul. At that moment, and is, he is praying, and he has seen a vision that a man named Ananias would come and lay hands on him so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard many things about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints in Jerusalem, and how he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who invoke your name. But the Lord said to him, go, for he is an instrument whom I have chosen to bring my name before Gentiles and kings and before the people of Israel. I myself will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. He laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on your way here, has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes and his sight was restored and he got up and was baptized. 
and after taking some food, he regained his strength. For several days, he was with the disciples in Damascus and immediately began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogue, saying, he is the Son of God. Thank you, Clay, very much. Now, young at heart, and I know you're all young at heart, I think one of the, the stories that most people remember from Sunday school is when Saul is walking and he's blinded by this flash of light and he falls to the ground. Now, hold that thought, your, your memory you might have of it. Uh, but going back to thinking about school and younger people, do we have bullies in the Bible? You ever think about that? Do we have bullies in the Bible? Yes. Yeah, very, very big bully. And Saul was the major one. Now, I'm not going to be focusing my message today either the young at heart or the regular message uh, on Jesus, because Jesus is already built into this. Jesus has been sent to the cross. He died. He was in the tomb, and he was raised. The fact that we have to remember, we are still in the Easter season. The tomb is empty. That's what makes a difference in what we believe. Jesus is raised. Because we believe in Jesus, we will also be raised. We have life eternal. But the fact is, Saul was a Pharisee. Saul was a very, very strong Jew, and he believed everything the Jewish <clears throat> excuse me, leadership at the time was saying, and they were against Jesus. Now, remember what happened. After Jesus came back and surprised the disciples and showed him his wounds and, and <clears throat> excuse me, had breakfast with them on the shore, they could not keep quiet. They were then being harassed and bothered. You can't talk about him. And they said, we can't help but talk about Jesus and the fact he rose. He is God's son. He is God in person. He came to us. He couldn't, they could not stop him. So we have people like Saul trying to get rid of the, the Christians, the new Jew, uh, Jesus followers. And he's on his way <coughs> excuse me, to Damascus to kill them, have them killed. And he's on his way. And if we can see the picture, there it is up here. This is from uh, the cathedral in Cologne, Germany, this um, stained glass. And it shows Saul. On the bottom there, he's fallen down. It's like he's suddenly blinded by this. Like he falls down, and he hears a voice. And the voice is, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And when Saul sees this, he hears this, the light he can't see, he knows it's Jesus. And it suddenly dawns on them, he's real. He's really God. I'm wrong. So he says, he speaks to the Lord, and the Lord says he wants him to go to Damascus, and somebody would meet him there. So he now realizes, so the, the, the people who are with him, they don't, see, they don't see the light, but they hear the voice. Imagine how scary that is if you hear this voice, Jesus talking to Saul. So they, Saul stands up, he can't, he's blinded now, he's totally disabled. So they help him get to Damascus. Now at the same time, as Clay read, Ananias, a, a disciple, heard from God, had a vision. And the, and the words were, you're going to see Saul, and, and, and the, anxious, the, the comment was, himself, well, he's a bully. I don't want to go see him. He's, you know, he kills Christians. But God knew this, and God said, you know, go. You know, I will have a purpose for him. So it turns out they meet, and as Ananias is talking to Saul, he loses the scales. His blindness goes away. And right after that, he is baptized. When you're baptized, you claim you believe in Jesus. So this is a total turnaround from this Bible bully. He now believes, and soon after that, he's seen in synagogues preaching that Jesus is Lord. Now, do you think bullies can turn around that quickly? Anybody? How do they turn around? Brianna? Any idea? <laughs> the, bu the bullies, and you have bullies in school, right? We bullies, the bullies are in the world all over, workplace, wherever. You can have bullies in church sometimes. And, you know, wherever you go, because people are human. How can people change from being such a mean, mean bully? How can you do it? How can they do it? Because we're going to pray for them. We're going to pray for them. All we can do is pray. We have to pray for people who hurt us. Pray that God change their ways and, and keep them, us all safe. Because once you believe in Jesus, God can do anything with you. And once Saul believed in Jesus... God turned his whole life around. And then Saul became Paul, was the main leader. He went out and told, through many, many countries to tell who Jesus was, and all the churches started springing up. If it wasn't for Paul, 
carrying on the news and the word of the other disciples that they knew about Jesus, we wouldn't be here today. This is the witness, and the word kept spreading. Now, I'm going to read the next story, and this is from a true account, and this is from Acts also. It's right after this reading. Okay, and this is from... Get my exact wording here. This is from... Uh, Acts 9, 36 through 43. Now, the people are still all excited, and Paul's on the scene, and Peter, remember Peter? Peter was the rock. Peter's the one also who ran from Jesus. And the cock crowed three times, and he left Jesus. But they all know Jesus is alive. So in the reading of the gospel, I ask that you start, well, this is not to say seated. Uh, Peter uh, is in uh, Lydda and Joppa. Now, in Joppa, there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which is Greek in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. Does that sound familiar? Here? Good works and acts of charity. At that time, she became ill and died. When they had washed her, and they had laid her in the room upstairs, just prior to burial. Now, since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples who heard Peter was there sent two men with a request, please come to us without delay. Now, a little backstory on this. Peter knows Jesus is alive. Peter has gone out like other disciples. And what, what Jesus had told them in the book of John was that you will do greater deeds than I. You will heal, you'll do things. So what, what was going on, yeah, Jesus was gone from, from view, but they all now were doing what Jesus did. So when this person got very sick, and they loved this person very much, disciples, there were people who were following Jesus all over now, they sent, go get Peter. See if Peter will come, because they knew he had wonderful Jesus power. So they, went, so, so they went to get Peter, and they said to him, please come to us without delay. And Peter got up and went with them, and when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs where she was laid. Now, all the widows stood beside him. Now, this would be like a funeral home. All the widows stood behind him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with him. I can't help but think of the beautiful blanket, Debbie and the work you do, and all the stitching work, and all the help that goes on in this church that you do, the, 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 the event on Saturday, you give things that, for people who are in great need, and clothing, and this, if what we still have left over, will continue, you're not gonna junk it, it's gonna go to other people who need it. We care for other people, and Karen, why don't you tell us right now, Karen, about the uh, uh, shoe collection, the sneaker collection, because this ties in perfectly. Yeah, but that, this is, and this is an example of doing something, focusing for other people. It's an act of charity and kindness, okay? So this is what they were telling about what uh, Tabitha was like, and they were very, very upset. And then Peter tells them, uh, Peter uh, put all the people outside, and then he knelt down, and he prayed. Again, the way to, if you have a bully in your life, pray for them. If there's somebody who's very, very sick, you pray for them. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. She opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. Well, she was dead. And she said, she, she had, Peter had the same power that Jesus had in raising people. He gave her his hand and helped her up. And then calling the saints and the widows, he showed her to be alive. And this became known throughout Joppa, and many more believed in the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So now we're going to move from the idea of the bullying and the children to the more of a Mother's Day theme and family love, because this is what God's love is all about, helping other people. And you think, well, you know, yeah, I do this, I do that. Well, and then sometimes we think, well, what will my legacy be? I actually, in both churches, have had people mention, well, I hope this is my legacy. It's something so often we don't think about. So today, I think we should think. What is, think about your own mothers or grandmothers or somebody in, in your life who has been very loving and guiding to you. That, that was a legacy. How was that legacy lived out? How did they live it out to other people? 
And then think to yourself, well, what legacy do I want? Do I want to be the one with the most cars, the most houses, the most degrees in my name? What makes a difference, really? And when it comes down to it, it's how you share God's love with other people. Acts of charity and kindness. Not being bullies, but helping other people in need. This is what people think about. And, and when you, th you think about when you stand around the funerals and you talk or you send a card, what kind of thing do you write? What do you say? It's how the person has showed love for others. Devoted to good works and acts of charity. Now, Peter was able to do this because he had that power. But the good thing is we have the power today, too, because when you get swept up in something and you know you're doing God's work, you can't help yourself. It's just like you're, you can't help telling people that Jesus is alive, there's hope. You know, don't give up. Because he can change your life. He can turn it around. He can change people who are around you. And he can open doors so that you are more woven into your own family, your church family. Think about helping each other with yard sales and such. Coffee times. Anytime we gather together, it's not to make ourselves look good. Obviously, churches don't look very good in many places in the world today. If you saw the, the news, it's awful. Churches must be examples of love, acceptance, inclusion, connections. When we think about the family, we must think about reaching out to others. We must think about how God's healing can come through us. And in that, we can have joy and faith and hope and peace that this world so sorely needs. Amen. Let us now turn to the gift of love through Jesus as he shared with us in the Last Supper his love and his promise to always be with us. Marianne. And we thank Maria and her granddaughter for our help this morning. Preparation. And we have our uh, words that you will be repeating on the screen. It's a, always a joy. It's a joy to remember how much God loves us and how much Jesus loves us. And as he sat with his disciples for the Last Supper, he told us these words. And these words are ritual, ritual like funerals and, and weddings, and that we must keep going. We need this connection with Jesus and God more than we ever did before. Let us now take a moment to confess to God what we might need to share with him at this time, knowing that he hears and forgives us. Let us pray. Amen. And in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. And now let us join in the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is a right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You brought all things into being and called them good. From the dust of the earth, you formed us into your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. And now, with all the people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join the unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of love and majesty, the whole universe speaks of your glory. Blessed is Jesus who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna in the highest. Lift up your hearts and give thanks to God. Blessed are you, O God, who with your word and the Holy Spirit created all things and called them good. In Jesus Christ, your word became flesh and lived among us. Through Jesus' suffering and death, you took upon yourself our sin and death and destroyed their power forever 
by raising Jesus from the dead. Again, I point out our symbolic tomb. Jesus is raised from the dead. We have hope. Your glory you poured out his life for us, and now your Holy Spirit pours over us as we remember we are the people of your new covenant. Let us remember that that night before Jesus met with death and gave himself up for us, he was with his disciples for the Passover meal. When he took the bread, he gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the bread, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, to all his disciples, and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me, this ongoing connection. We'll add to the visual element. Jesus said, this is my body broken for you. Jesus died for each one of us. And then he lifted the cup. And he said, this is my blood poured out for all of you. Drink of this and remember me. In remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we now proclaim the mystery of faith. Let us proclaim the fundamental beliefs. Christ has died. Christ, has died. Christ, is, risen. Christ is risen. And Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, so that we may be for the world. See how this connection goes? So we may be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, Lord, make us one with Christ, one with each other, one in ministry. Those are the acts of charity and kindness to the world. Until Christ comes in final victory, we will feast at his heavenly banquet. And now let us join in the prayers Jesus taught us, our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. It is now our time to rejoice and to come forward as you are led. Mary Ann has prepared the bread in very small pieces and they're in cups. And then we have the individual plastic cups to dispose of. Please come, the table of Jesus is ready. Heidi, the body of our Lord broken for you, Heidi. Patsy and Bob body of our Lord broken for you. Thank you. Carl. The body of our Lord Jesus broken for you.
you going to argue? Please join me in prayer. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you had given yourself to us through Jesus. Wherever we are, remind us that we are one <clears throat> in your eternal love and promise. Fill us with your gracious love, patience, and peace every day so that we might live as you want us to live with all peoples, as Jesus taught us, serving and loving each other. Amen. And now let us turn to our hymn on 140, which is Great is Thy Faithfulness. Verses 1, 2, and 3, please. Standing as you're able. Please be seated. Let us now join in our time of prayer. Uh, we've already said the Lord's Prayer, so we will be saying the, uh, we'll discuss the prayers of the people first and lift them up and the pastoral prayer, and then we will close with that time. Remembering prayer is vital in everything, whether it's for bullies or people who are trespassing against us. We keep saying this. We just need to remember prayer, prayer, prayer. Um, do we have special uh, updates that we'd like to share at this time? Kim, how's your dad doing? Any updates you'd like to share? Um, you know, he was 
sure you talk to him soon, tell him we're praying for him. Anyone else? I would like to share an update. It went through uh, uh, the prayer chain. A, a good friend of mine, uh, Dave, we've been praying for recently. He was uh, re-diagnosed with terrible cancer that had spread. They thought they had, they had cured it, actually. Well, he was in remission for a good couple of years. Uh, his, uh, while he was in Newburgh, they were trying to get his strength up. He had a terrible infection started a week ago. Um, uh, everything, he, uh, liver, his liver shut down, his kidney, one kidney left shut down. So they did get him back to Sloan at 1.30 Saturday morning. Uh, but now he's connected with ongoing dialysis. It's, it's a time that the family is gathering today for Mother's Day. So we have to remember people doing all kinds of things today. They're not all having a good time. Some people are having mournful times. But we all have God's love, and we must remember that peace. And uh, so I will ask continued prayers for Dave and his family. Uh, he needs all kinds of radiation and chemo, and they can't do anything until the... But God knows, and God, I know, is with the family. So thank you for your prayers. And a word of my, my cousin... We were praying for um, Rosie for, for months and months and months. Uh, she was looking forward to the uh, uh, pancreatic. There's a cancer surgery they can do. Uh, but the numbers all of a sudden dropped, and they said they're not going to do the surgery. And she's in some sort of remission, which I would call a miracle. Uh, this was really, I mean, she lost so much weight. Uh, it, it was just a, so prayer, again, prayer, prayer, prayer. That's all I can say for whatever you are facing or going through. Um, are there any others that you'd like to lift up? Anybody online? Yes, Patsy, please. Yes, Patsy. So Robert and I went to uh, Vermont on Wednesday, and I saw my sister, who was doing um, pretty good in spite of the trials and tribulations. It was good to see her. Um, and my nephew is in a prison in Keene, New Hampshire, and he's scared to death, which he should be. And um, I just want continued prayers for them and for my cousin's husband, uh, Ben, who has PLAS, uh, pray for him. Thank you. Thank you, Patsy. And you know, we hear people in, incarcerated in various situations, and, and we are told to pray for people in prisons, visit people in prisons, pray for people who are sick. Always pray, pray, pray. I can't say that enough. I can't say it enough today. Anything else? All right, let us pray. Oh, Lord God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the fact that we are focusing on the family and motherhood today and the fact that we all have so much to be thankful for. Lord, both starting with your giving us birth and the fact we know that your everlasting arms will always hold us because great is your faithfulness. Lord, we thank you for our families at home and those who are unable to be together today. Lord, may they all feel your love and the connections they have that are beyond anything anyone can give each other. But love through you. Lord, we pray for those people who are feeling such pain today for disease and sickness and mental situations, emotional problems, where people have, do not have work or they do not have a home or they do not have food. We pray, Lord, for people who are in such need. Lord, we pray for the church, the United Methodist Church, as it continues to try to find its way forward. May it follow your light. Lord, we thank you for our homes, our food, and the safety we have we ask, Lord, for those who are not in safe conditions. We ask, Lord, for protection of all men and women in the military. Lord, we ask for men and women in the armed forces who are in harm's way and who are leaving their families behind. We ask, Lord, for first responders. We ask, Lord, for teachers and nurses and doctors, all who stand in the gap for helping others in need. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the fact that we know your word, we know your love, and that we are able to be filled and Go out into the community and build connections of such love for this world that is so lost and so hurting. Lord, we, we thank you for the support that Patsy's family is being given. We ask that you continue to be with each one of them. Give them peace, give them safety, give them healing. Lord, we continue to pray for Bud, Kim's, Kim's dad. We pray for Donna, we pray for Janine, for Ralph and his newest grandson and, and the family. Lord, we pray for Brian and family. We pray for Carl, and we thank you for Carl's presence here this day. Lord, we thank you for Fiona, and we ask that you continue to give her strength. We ask, Lord, for Rose, Joe's mom. We ask for Olivia. We ask for a friend of the De Persino family. Lord, we pray for Barbara, for Sharon, for Victoriano, for Chandra, for Janet, for Nareda, for Betty Snook, for Doreen, Ben Balkenberg, for Gail, Stephanie's mother-in-law. 
Lord, we pray for Vivian. Lord, we pray that she be, she hear our words to come to church, Vivian, that, that she get up and that she come join us, Lord, next Sunday. Lord, we pray for Eleanor. We pray for Heather's mom who had surgery recently. We pray for Janet Eilers and, and Alice Felt. And Lord, we continue to pray for Barbara and Dave. And the names, Lord, that are not heard. Lord, we know you know each one. And we ask that you continue to hold us and them in your loving arms. Jesus, we thank you. Amen. At this point is our opportunity and joy to give back to God while he has so richly blessed us with. If I just could please come forward. <laughs> Please rise. loving God, we give back what is yours. May it be used to help people who are ill, who are lost, who are afraid, who need peace, who need healing. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Uh, today I'm going to switch back. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out which way is to, uh, should I have the benediction at the end or before the announcements? I, I'm, asked, I'm waiting for your, your opinions, your suggestions. So we're going to go to announcements again today. Uh, if we could see uh, up here, again, thank you for all who continue to support the church in so many ways, from the hands and hours you put working on the, on the, the sale yesterday, and now those of you going to go home look in your closet for shoes. <laughs> thank you all. Any questions, again, uh, financially, please see Craig. Uh, are there any updates on COVID in this area? We're good? Yep. Good. Yep. Good. Excellent. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. Uh, would you like to share this? Explain yeah. it. Yes, please. Hi. Um, so this is something that we did last year, and it was hugely successful. Um, wow. It's going to be on the same day. Uh, as Gail's plant sale. So you can get plants in the morning, go home, have a nice lunch, and then you can pop back out um, to the church parking lot. And we will be collecting items for our food pantry that the food pantry cannot easily get. So they can get all kinds of food, but they can't get things um, like what you see listed up there, toothpaste, shampoo, feminine pads, bladder control pads, small bottles, and we stress small bottles of laundry and dish detergent, and even cat and dog food in small bags or cans. So we'll be collecting those on May the 21st for our food pantry. Okay, thank you, Heidi. And isn't that, doesn't that sound like a charitable act of kindness? Here we go. All kinds of opportunities. And uh, Gail, we've already heard about the plant sale. Any other thoughts come to mind? No, okay, thank you. Um, the Penny Social at Wikipedia is going to be the 21st. This, this, open the doors at 11. The callings at 1 is going to be basically outdoors. Any questions on that, let me know. Also, we have live music on June 12th, 4 to 5. Mark Dima, who is our resident guitarist, composer, vocalist, artist. Again, this is a charity event. Uh, so please, if you're able, please stop by and check it out. It's, it's, he's a great musician. 
Uh, adult and Bible studies, uh, any, uh, Patsy or Clay, would you like to any, share any updates? Okay, thank you. Uh, the Super Sunday School continues on going. Make sure you're attending, girls. Uh, Trinity Peacemakers, again, like uh, Tabitha, you do all kinds of good work. Thank you. Uh, yoga, uh, any information? It would just, it's all in here in the bulletin uh, to continue to follow. Uh, we have our food pantry. Any updates? Anything to be aware of this coming month? Can you put May already? <laughs> yes, May already. <laughs> I'm going to, uh, would you like me to ask other churches in the co-op if they have any people who would like to come assist? No. Okay. All right. Okay. I just thought I asked. Okay. Uh, thank you. Anything else? Any, uh, Karen, would you like to, we had a few people arrive a little late. Would you want to just say a little more about the sneakers and what we hope to be doing? Remember, your voice counts every time you have a chance to vote. Uh, we have some, in, uh, I don't know, did, did we get sent to send out the bus trip yet to Lancaster? No, we didn't say anything about that yet. Okay, all right. So we are, uh, we've been invited, uh, the Poughkeepsie United Methodist Church, they've done this before, I understand, a bus trip to Sight and Sound, uh, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. It's not until October 21st, but the way time flies, you better think about it now. Uh, a lot of information. I have a, a flyer here, and Heidi will be sending one out uh, to you very soon so that you can consider this. Uh, here, it, it, and if you have who, who's not been to Sight and Sound, if you've never been there, it's great. It's a great opportunity. It's a great show, and um, it, it's 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 big. It's 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 a lot of musical music and such. But uh, I would consider that again. You know, finding ways we can meet, work together as the families of of Christ. Uh, I do have something I want to share with you. Um, uh, it's a piece of paper. It's from the uh, Book of Discipline, United Methodist Church, from the nurse, nurturing community, we have social principles, things we follow. Now, I'm sure you've been seeing on the news a lot of things happening this week, uh, and some particularly Catholic churches are being targeted this morning. There was a horrible scene that down uh, yesterday in the city uh, at uh, the cathedral. Um, people wonder what's all abortion all about. And I'm not going to preach about it, I'm not talking about it, but I want you to know, you know, God loves everybody, and, but I, it's just between you, your doctor, and God. Okay, I'm not going to say any more about that, but you should know the church's position. If you would like to know, it's, it's quite long, usually the church is very wordy. Uh, I'm going to leave this here, and if you'd like me to send you the information, I, just, just let me know and I will email it to you. Uh, plus the other information, the church is uh, moving along and it's splintering. Uh, it's not a lot of noise you're going to hear about, uh, but there's a lot of information. I know Patsy sent a piece around to the, uh, the Ed Council. church count, Ed Council. Uh, and I have a lot more I can, you know, if you want to talk about any of these topics at all, please speak to me. I don't, I just, I, I'd like to talk to people individually before we do anything bigger. Uh, but, you know, God is love. And if you have a question, I'm here to help you work through whatever you have a question about. Are there any questions on any of this? Okay. Just, Would it, um, yes. You know, the Book of Discipline you can find online. Yes. It, so if yes. you are curious about the, the uh, social dust justice part of the Book of Discipline. Mm -hmm. It starts around 160 or 161, but you can Google it and find yeah. it online and it's right there. Mm -hmm. I just want to make, I, you know, sometimes people, well, I go to church, but I don't hear anything about anything and I know, but what I, I don't know what they think. Well, yeah, this is what they think. If you care to, you know, if you care to know. And it, this is from the 2016 book. Uh, if we ever, when we do meet again, it could be modified. It's been changed every general conference. Yeah, and this is, it's, it's a lot of meetings in that, but enough on that. Um, are there any other church announcements we need to share? Okay, then let me pronounce a benediction. As you prepare to go, go knowing that God loves you. We are all part of God's family through Jesus Christ. 
and we need to pray for each other for so many reasons. Go feeling the love, the everlasting arms, and the light of Jesus Christ in your life. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. And now let us sing our closing piece. God bless you all.